Gary Blevins here with the next installment in uh, my series on practical programming for strength training. Today I'm going to talk about uh, strength theory and the theory that Mark Ripito uh, functions with as he presents the information in his book. Uh, I've got a chart to go with this, but there's a lot of parts to the chart. And one of the things I'm going to try and do is keep these videos fairly short so that I can label the topics in the videos so that if people have a specific question that they're asking, they can go to it. So some of these videos may be as short as, you know, two or three mini minutes because they're only covering uh, one topic. This is going to cover about half the chart and I'll have another video that I'll be posting up soon with the other half so the whole chart will make sense. Now, this is the chart and it has a couple of important parts. One, you should note that the red over here is discussing rate of adaptation. This refers to how um, quickly you can recover and adapt to a stressor or workout uh, stimulus. For powerlifting, this would be uh, the stressor of ball, uh, barbell movement. And this top line here, this black dashed line, represents your potential. And the, uh, and the bottom right here is years of training. So uh, on this, it goes up to year six. Obviously, people can train longer in six years, but this is what I have on the chart. So what I want you to notice is that the longer you train, the lower your rate of adaptation is. And what this means is, as you become more adapted to training stimulus, it takes a greater stimulus for you to adapt the same way. Uh, this will make more sense when we talk about the distinctions of novice, intermediate, and advanced in the next video. But over years of training, rate of adaptation decreases because your body becomes more adept at adapting to the stimulus and the stressors that it experiences. Likewise, as you train, your strength performance goes up. But you'll notice that these curves are inversely related to each other. As strength performance, your absolute strength ability increases, your adaptation decreases. Now, how do you get around this? How do, when your rate of adaptation is very low, how do you keep your strength performance increasing? Well, that's where the need for training complexity comes into play. And what training complexity is, is changing the stressors or the way those stressors that you're adapting to, uh, changing the way that those are experienced in your body. What this means is you have to have more complex training to drive strength gains when your rate of adaptation is low because you have to find new ways to trick your body into adapting and getting stronger than it already is. And that's the difference between exercising and training. Training, you're going to have a planned approach to what you're doing, whereas with exercise, you're just going into the gym and working hard. Well, if you go into the gym and work hard for a little while, yeah, you're going to make gains if you haven't been doing anything. But because our bodies are so highly, uh, really prepared to adapt to any sort of stressor that we put them under, even if you're doing really hard workouts, really hard exercise, your body's going to adapt to that quickly and your gains are going to stall unless you have a plan. And that's where training complexity comes in.